Nashville, Tennessee, it's Dove Channel's Stand Up For Families Comedy Hour with Shonda Pierce, featuring Bone Hampton, Sandy Joy, Cleto Rodriguez, and comedian Nazareth. Now, here's your host, the queen of clean herself, Shonda Pierce. I am so excited that you're here, and I'm very excited that you are watching this at home. So get some popcorn, get the kids in the room. This is all going to be fun, family-friendly, hilarious night. Because I know what it's like to have family. I came from one. <laughs> That sounded kind of blonde. This is the thing. I was a preacher's kid, so that's why I'm a comedian now. <laughs> that really, really. If you, like, grow up in the South and you're a preacher's daughter and a middle child, that's kind of a cross between a, a nun and a Las Vegas showgirl right there. <laughs> Especially if you grow up in a holiness church. Anybody know what a holiness church is? Hair up, skirt down, the whole church motto right there. <laughs> My mama had that Tower of Babel stuck up on her head. <laughs> She's a holy woman. And my mother would make our clothes. I don't think that was a preacher's wife thing. I think that was just like a little added bonus for therapy. <laughs> <laughs> but she did. She made, McCall's 2243 was our pattern growing up. <laughs> She stuck with the same pattern. She'd get this fabric on sale at the back of Rose's department store. I grew up in South Carolina. Rose's department store, big, thick polyester. On a Sunday morning, our little outfits are like, you could smell us coming a mile away. That, that fabric did not vent, you know. And so, yeah, people used to think we were getting blessed with our tambourine. We were sweating because the fabric was so thick. And so, just fun. Macaws, we love that. We had drawstring skirts, you know, because elastic was too worldly, so she just put a little, <laughs> little rope in there. I don't know how we kept our drawers up, but we did. <laughs> and so that we were little stair steps. It was my brother, the oldest, the firstborn of our family, the hopes and dreams of all the generations to come. <laughs> and you know who you are. You know, the world revolves around you and everything you say, and my brother is still like that. He still tells me what to do with my life, and now he's a shrink, so now he charges me. And so, but yeah, we had the firstborn, we had our outfits, we had the firstborn was Mike, and then my big sister, Charlotta, my, my mom got clever with our names after Mike. Charlotta was a cross between Charles, my dad, and Lottie, my grandma, and put their names together and made Charlotta, which I thought was very clever. And then my little sister was Sherilyn. My mama had two girlfriends, Cheryl and Lee, and put their names together and made Sherilyn. So I thought that was really sweet. And then I was the middle, Shonda, because my dad drove a Chevy and my mom liked Hondas. <laughs> I, I wish that was a joke. <laughs> We would sing songs. Now, this is the truth. My church was very, very strict. We had no dancing. We didn't call it dancing. We'd call it foot fellowship every now and then. But dancing will send you straight to hell in a handbasket, so we didn't do it. And I heard that a lot. If you say that again, you're going to hell in a handbasket. Do that again, you're going to hell in a handbasket. Wear that again, you're going to hell. I was 14 when I asked my mother, how big is the handbasket? <laughs> because me and four cousins are going to hell in the same handbasket. And who's carrying the handbasket to hell? That's what I want to know. Somebody should take that guy out. <laughs> so yeah, so we would sing our songs. We, were, we, we tried to have choreography, but we weren't allowed to have much, but we tried. And so we had our outfits alike. We had a little drawstring skirts, a little patent leather shoes with the little lacy socks. You know what I'm talking about? It's hard on my brother. But we... <laughs> We had a wonderful time, though, and so we would sing our songs. We had our choreography. We'd sing, We're the singing Courtney's. How do you do, you do? We love to sing for Jesus. How do you do, you do? We are so very, very proud to meet you. How do you do, you do? <laughs> Doesn't that make you want to get your heart right with something? <laughs> we would sing, this is Michael. How do you do, you do? 
he sings the bass. How do you do? He was so, so humiliated, but he, he had nice legs. And you know what's so funny? He grew up and became a preacher for a little while and wore a robe on Sunday. Maybe God was preparing him as a young child. Just saying. We'd say, this is Charlotta. How do you do? You do? She was so cool. She had that fair faucet hair. Remember in the 70s, everybody tried? I tried to feather my hair back like that. I looked like the rear end of a chicken. But... <laughs> She was so pretty. Like, see, she sings the alto. How do you do? You do. Like, that's so cute. We say, this is Sherilyn. She just smiles. She was shy. We sing, this is Shonda. How do you do, you do? <laughs> Dogs would come running for miles. <laughs> we didn't even need a sound system when I was singing. And we didn't have one for a long time because you usually saw sound systems in bars. And so we didn't want that in the sanctuary because you didn't know where those wires came from. <laughs> This is true. We finally talked to church. You know, okay, some of these people are probably dead, so it's okay, tell them. That's the church way. We don't gossip, we just share. Some people call it prayer requests, but we know what it is. So this is true. We got this sound system, and we were so excited about it because we finally, the church board finally let us have a sound system, and it had the well, it came from Radio Shack, because nothing is too good for our church. And <laughs> it came from Radio Shack, and it had those smushy balls on there, you know, the little the windscreens, what they call it. We thought it was just spit stoppers. It, <laughs> you know, if your preacher's a spitter, it comes in handy. You just ring them out, rinse them out at the end of the night. <laughs> what? Y'all ain't been to church if you ain't had a good spitter up there. <laughs> so it was just over. We got this sound system, but somehow on a real clear sunny day, now some of you fellows will know about this, on a real clear sunny day, somebody, CB radio, a truck driver or something, would come in on the speaker in the middle of the service. I will never forget, my daddy got up to pray and he said, Our Father and our God in this fourth trip. <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> to Jesus immediately. That scared me to death. I'm not kidding. And we always had to sit up front, which is the funniest thing. We always had to sit on the second row piano side, which means we had, you know, pianos in our church. And so, uh, but uh, it, Mama played the piano, so she needed something to do. And, and uh, we sat on the second row so she could get a hold of us quicker, you know, if we're up front. And that is one fast woman. I have never known another woman that can beat their kids between the second and third verse of Victory and Jesus. <laughs> Choir never missed a beat. Pop! And get right back on the piano, bitch. Just... She was amazing. And then when she wasn't playing, she was sitting by us, which was sweet uh, of her because she had to kind of keep us in line. And, and she would have what I called these little righteous pinchers. Did your mom ever do this in church where she's trying to get a hold of you so nobody would know she's getting a hold of you? Everybody just thought we were getting blessed because we're like... <laughs> you could spell out just as I am in the bruise marks on the side of my leg. She had a moon, she had a grip like nobody's business. But a lot of my sense of humor I learned from my mother and I, she hates it when I blame her for this. <laughs> But, you know, a lot of people say, is this your ministry? And I don't want to blame God for this. So, it's just better to blame your mother. But she, she had such a great sense of humor. There was a time in her life when we were afraid. You know, all the things that just drive you nuts about your parents or your mother, and you think you're never going to be that way, and then you wind up that way, and, and your mother just laughs. 
She's brutal. She's brutal. But there was a time when she went through breast cancer. Now, and I will say, girls listening out there and all the ladies here in the audience, you got to take care of yourselves. you got to watch your body. you got to pay attention to what the Lord has given your body signals for. And she went through breast cancer, and it was frightening. And we thought we were going to lose her. And I just, I hate to say this, because she had just kind of found a little bit of freedom in her life. Do you know what I mean? I mean, she started wearing, first time I ever saw her in a pair of pants, she was like 46. And then she got her ears pierced when she's like 62. Wow. I know. She started wearing ruby red lipstick when she was 80. <laughs> she went to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> so here we were. Now, this is the strangest thing. We were, we were in a cemetery, because that's what you do in Tennessee when you got nothing to do. You just walk around the cemetery. They have what you call in Tennessee, we have what you call decoration day. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where you go, if any of your kinfolk has passed, you go to the cemetery and you put flowers on graves and you put flowers on graves that nobody cared about. So you just decorate the place up and then you sit and have fried chicken with the dead, I guess. <laughs> you take your potato salad down there. Am I right? How many from Tennessee? You know, you have a picnic in the cemetery. Now, I'd like to think that there are angels in this world, but I'm telling you, if a, if a hand come up out of that ground and got my chicken leg... <laughs> I would give my life to Jesus again. <laughs> and so, you know, so we're just having a wonderful time. It was really, and she had gone through this breast cancer, which is probably a really weird place to hang out if you've been through chemo and all that, but she insisted, and she, she had gotten her new little Eva Gabor wig, which I was so excited to tell her, that is so worldly, mother, you know. <laughs> and, but she, she had her, her little Eva Gabor on and her little lipstick and her new little ear bobs, and we were having a wonderful time, and she stood up to dust off her knees, and the wind caught that little Eva Gabor. <laughs> and just blew it smack off her head. And we're trying to be respectful and not laugh out loud, you know, because she looked just like Yoda. <laughs> she had like the little crinkle skin and the ears popping up. It, it, it was cute, but it was like, and then I'm at that age where I can't laugh and walk at the same time to get the wig. You know, so we got to send the grandkids out there, go get your grandma's hair, you know, and it's just, it is rolling like a tumbleweed, you know, and we are grabbing the thing, and she's got some pride about her. We are shoved it on her head as fast as grass was sticking out of it. It looked like she'd been in the barn for hours, you know. It was just awful, and finally she, she was just, you know, we thought she was embarrassed, and that little mop was on her head. We kept spinning it around trying to find the part. And finally, she was breathing so hard and heavy, you know, and she'd been so sickly. And I thought, I said, Mother, are you crying? And her little shoulders were shaking. She said, no. I guess as long as I can chase my hair, I am alive. <laughs> I love that. See, no matter what you're going through, there, no matter where you are, laughter just does good. And she laughed at everything. And I just love that about her. And when we were growing up, we had... Funny things that happen. I, I used to try to just give my testimony and people kept laughing. <laughs> and that kind of hurts my feelings. <laughs> and then I got paid for it. And then I was like, well, thank you, Lord. <laughs> one of the funniest stories from my childhood. Now, my daddy was one of those spitting preachers. He just gets excited about his own sermon. I remember one time he was preaching. And preachers like to get these little catchphrases. So you remember the sermon, you know, and he used to say this all the time. Your time is limited. He was preaching on the second coming of the Lord. Your time is limited. And, and Uncle Lemmy sat on the back row and would kind of watch the clock for people. And he thought, my daddy said, what time is it, Lemmy? <laughs> About the third time my dad was fired up. Your time is limited. Uncle Lemmy said, you got 15 more minutes. <laughs> Of course, the best time, the best time in all the world was when he was preaching. Now, this is ugly, but it's true. And, uh, and, and I can share it because his hearing's not good anymore. <laughs> he was preaching and his pants were unzipped. And I'm sure that happens for fellas. And so uh, he had, I guess, forgot to check. But 
And he, thank goodness he had a great big wooden pulpit. And if he would get behind the pulpit, nobody would pay attention. They'd just start listening to the sermon. And it was fine. But then he'd get to blessed, and he'd get to spitting, and he'd march over there and preach. And this side of the church would start snickering and laughing because they noticed that he'd finally moved back to the pulpit. And we'd all go, okay. And so then he'd get to going on this side. And everybody over here, and finally my brother, the firstborn, he took out a great big poster and went to the back of the church and held up a sign that said, Dad, zip it up. He thought we were trying to tell him to shut up. And he looked at the congregation and said, I know you're wanting me to zip it up, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it was a beautiful service. We are here tonight to just laugh. And if you're sitting at home, I know that you're going to laugh because we have the best lineup of people in the country. You're going to love this entire comedy series. So stay tuned every time we're on and enjoy the night. The next guy coming up is so much fun. And I say this with all seriousness. He is very much like a son to me. I feel like I have been his mama of comedy for a long time and I cheer for him every time I see him on The View, every time I see him in a movie. He was just in Woodlawn. He's been in All About Steve with Sandra Bullock and Bradley Cooper. His new DVD is called Unofficially Famous, and he is the very, very funny Bone Hampton! <laughs> Y'all keep it going for my mama. Yeah. Y'all gonna look at me like that? That is my mama. All right, I was so big when I was born, I sucked out all the pigmentation with me. She's actually an albino black woman and her real name is Chandrella. It is what it is. It is what it is. That's the hot new phrase right there. Everybody's always saying that it is what it is. It is what it is. That's the new way of saying somebody's about to take advantage of you. That's what that is. Because don't nothing good ever happens before you hear it is what it is. It ain't never anything cool like, hey, here you a check for $2,500. For what, Bone? It is what it is. There's always something horrible, something terrible, like you show up on a blind date. Uh, you're supposed to be a woman. Bone, it is what it is. No, it ain't. <laughs> Mama. That's probably why I ain't got no girlfriend right now. That ain't why. Movie prices. That's why I ain't got no girlfriend. <laughs> Expensive movie prices just ruin my dating life. You remember back in the day, fellas, when the movies used to be cheap? So you didn't really care if the date worked out? You know, she'd be like, Bone, I don't want to go to the movies with you no more. You too loud in country. I don't care. 450 Bye. <laughs> Ain't nobody scared of you. My mama gave me $10. <laughs> I got a dollar left. That's FOMO games or Donkey Kong. <laughs> you go to the movies nowadays, even the popcorn costs $975. <laughs> you be like, hey girl, I spend this much money on you. You gonna see me again. <laughs> Voluntarily or involuntarily. <laughs> it is what it is. Because you know it's a thin line between flirting and stalking. <laughs> no, because if a girl think you cute, she would never accuse you of stalking her. Brad Pitt can be hiding your bushes at 3 o'clock in the morning. And y'all will be like, that's so romantic. Get low, Brad, get low. Peekaboo. I see you. You're so silly. I show up at your job with a dozen roses and a teddy bear. You like, how you find out where I work? <laughs> well, it would have been a lot easier if you gave me your real first name. <laughs> Kimberly. <laughs> Got me looking for some girl named Lisa working at the Walmart. <laughs> now her husband tripping. <laughs> and I want the money back for the flowers I sent to her job. Now let's make this work. You know I love you. It is what it is, girl. You know what's really funny is a lot of y'all still looking at me like you trying to figure out if Shonda is really my mama. 
Y'all ain't been able to get on board with my jokes the whole time. Cause y'all like, is that really his mama? I mean, he trying to tell his jokes, but we trying to figure out. And did he really sleep at her house? <laughs> on the couch. On the couch. Now, one of the beautiful things about my career, I've been able to play in a lot of different places. I play in black churches and I play in white churches. And it's really easy when the whole room is white or the whole room is black. Because it's jokes you do with white folks that all white people laugh at. And jokes you do with black folks, all black people. When y'all get together, then I'm caught in the middle. <laughs> no, because when I wrote the joke about the stalking and hiding in the bushes, I wrote it for white people. That's why I say Brad Pitt. But I'm looking at all the black people like, I'm not going to be saying that's cute if Brad Pitt is in my bushes. I'm calling the police on that white boy. Now, if it was Idris Elba, I sure would be like, ooh, that's so romantic. Honey, go to the grocery store. You go to Walmart. Okay, I'm sorry. I guess that was a little bit too much for some of y'all. I'm sorry, every now and then I take it too far. I'm sorry. I'm an extremist like that. I'm an all or none type of dude. I don't believe in middle of the road. That's why I hate that game. Is the glass half empty or half full? I don't know. Either fill it all up or toss it out. That's what I need you to do. That's why I don't even believe in jogging. I'm either going to be in a full out sprint or I'm going to lay down and take a nap. Even the Lord say he'll spit you out if you lukewarm. I'm like, that's right, Lord. You either on fire for me or ice cold. That's right, Lord. That's why I'm mad at you about my looks. <laughs> you should have either made me look like Denzel Washington or Flavor Flav. <laughs> this in between is killing me. Okay, I'm going to need the people laughing to tell the people not laughing who Flavor Flav is so they can all be in on the joke. I'm not trying to tell inside jokes in here. Got y'all looking at me like, you got one more black joke to tell, okay? This is Franklin. This ain't Antioch, okay? Okay, wow. Y'all got real quiet when I said black, though, boy. Y'all... Did he say black? I thought y'all was called African-Americans. I'm black. <laughs> Call me black. But when you say African-American, I be looking for a Keem Olajuwon to come around. <laughs> Who African? My mama from Texas. I'm black. Probably another reason I ain't got no girlfriend. <laughs> Well, here's the thing, though. I talked to my pastor about it. He said, Bone, the problem is you're not watching the women in church close enough. Everybody in the church ain't saved yet. Some people still trying to get their stuff together. Pay attention to them. Do they come into church like they've been there before, or do they take out their ID because they think it's a club? <laughs> do they know that Mary was a virgin, or do they think that Mary was a Virgo? Listen. <laughs> when they see them letters, J-E-S-U-S, -S, do they know that's Jesus of Nazareth, or do they think it's Jesus from East L.A.? <laughs> See, most importantly, watch the way they highlight the Bible. Because you highlight your Bible to remind you of stuff you're struggling with, things you're trying to get better about. So I was sitting in church one Sunday, y'all. I thought I had found my wife. I thought this was my baby's mama. I thought she had my rib. But then I glanced over, she had highlighted, thou shall not kill. I'm like, why you got to be reminded not to kill somebody? Why you got little notes on the side? Never again, never again. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. So I decided, I'm just going to stay at home and read my Bible. That's what I'm going to do. And you got to be careful where you buy your Bible at, too. Because I was at the Dollar Tree. It wasn't the King James Version. It was the Rick James Version. So I realized I had purchased an irregular Bible. I didn't even know they made an irregular Bible. You don't know how hard it is to try to convince a woman you are a man of God. And you got a Rick James Bible. Like, ooh, bone, let's study the book of Revelation. Let's talk about the rapture. When Jesus coming back? Uh, baby, my Bible don't go that far. We need to study over here where Moses split the Burgundy Sea. The Burgundy Sea? I told you my Bible got issues. 
My Bible going through some stuff. Now, do you want to finish reading about Adam and Etna? It is what it is, girl. It is what it is. My mom laughs at that joke. My mom really was a great mom because when I was growing up as a kid, she always fought the battles that I wasn't supposed to fight. My kid fights, she let me do it, but grown folks, she step in. So I used to like to go to the movies, and you know, 12 and under is a different price than 13 and up. But when I would go pay, the lady give me a hard time because I was big for my age. Y'all ain't got to feel bad. I've been big for my age all my life. I've been this big since I was 16. <laughs> Weeks old. I just came out of my mama. Mama, give me some biscuits and gravy. So the lady going to tell me, next time you come, you need to bring your birth certificate. I was like, all right, cool. So the next time I came, I brought my mama. And she was like, let me tell you something. He is 12. He won't be 13 till July. So for the next six months, he's going to pay the 12 and under price. And if I got to come back down here, it's going to be a problem that you ain't ready for because I just found the Lord 15 minutes ago. So I will go back to the backslidden place I was when he found me then. And we'll start all over if you keep messing with my boy. I paid the 12 and under price till I was 35 years old. They like, let him go, let him go. His mama crazy. His mama is crazy. Let him go. She taught me to read the Bible all the time. And what I realized that if you read the Bible as a young kid, you can read that same story as an adult, and it'll have a whole different meaning. Because I remember reading the story of Samson as a young boy. I was like, Samson, you are so stupid. What is wrong with you? She's trying to kill you. And you keep going back. You're so stupid. Then when I was 25, I met this girl named Keisha. <laughs> I'm sorry, Samson. Uh, shouldn't have judged you so harsh till I walked in your shoes for a mile or two. Now, you see, I keep pacing this stage because I got a uh, sugar diabetes, so be having to make sure I'm okay. Y'all ain't got to feel bad for me. I earned my diabetes. <laughs> Believe me, by the time I went to the doctor, he was like, how much sugar did you eat? Enough to get type 2 diabetes. That's how much I ate. Okay, y'all really feel bad. <laughs> we still in the comedy show. This ain't my testimonial part. Y'all looking at me, we not going to laugh at that. No, nah, because you look like you're having a hard time, ball. You probably need to stop eating so much cake. Yeah, I know. Because that's the thing about when you got diabetes. You see food you ain't supposed to eat, you got to make a decision. Huh. Is that worth getting my foot cut off for? <laughs> you know what? No, I don't even like coconut cake. That ain't, oh, it's red velvet? Wait a minute, hold on. Hold on. I can walk with a limp. I can limp it on out. Yes, I can. It is what it is. So funny when Shonda said that I had been on The View, y'all, a lot of y'all had that look. Like, I watch The View all the time. I ain't never seen you on there. See, there are the giggles. Yeah, I ain't seen you on there. I was on there. I've been on there multiple times. My first time, I co-hosted, and we were talking about Michelle Obama had went and visited a third-grade class in Arizona, and a little girl raised her hand and said, hey, we hear y'all kicking people out the country that ain't got their papers, and my mama ain't got her papers. And so my thought was, why do your third grade daughter even know you ain't got your papers? Because I don't know about y'all, but I came from a need-to-know family. <laughs> I didn't know my mama's real name till I was 25. <laughs> she was like, my name is Mama. That's all they need to know. <laughs> like, all right then, Mama. <laughs> so it was real cool because it opened some more doors. I did a movie with Sandra Bullock, Bradley Cooper called All About Steve, where I played a security guard. Then I did an episode of My Name is Earl, where I played a prison guard. Then I did an episode of Medium, where I played prisoner number two. <laughs> People are always like, how you play a prison guard and prisoner number two? That's because I take my glasses off. <laughs> then that makes me double-sided. <laughs> See, like this, I could play a prison guard. Hey, Earl, you got to go to jail. Take my glasses off. <laughs> Prisoner number two. 
like this. I could play a pharmacist. Ha ha! Drug dealer. <laughs> like this, I could get a bank loan. Yes! Rob a bank. <laughs> so I just work with mine. And the cool thing about it is with the advancement, I ended up being a writer for The View. And the cool thing is they got hot topics, which is current events. I got to flip them, try to make them interesting. So like Dr. Oz was on there one time, and he said that your waist is supposed to be half the size of your height. I was like, I guess I'm going to have to start wearing heels then. <laughs> you ain't going to make me feel bad about my 6'2". I'm good. I'm good. Then they passed this law in Simi Valley, California, and they said if you are a registered sex offender and you want to decorate your house for Halloween, you got to put a sign on your door saying you registered. So the registered folks was up in arms. Ah, 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 if we put this sign on our door, ain't no kids going to come to our house. <laughs> That's the point. Well, well, we paid our dues and we did our time. Hey, it don't matter. Some stuff you do, you just don't get to be around that no more. You mess with kids, you don't get to be around kids no more. You rob a bank, you don't get to be a teller. You go to jail for arson, you don't get to pop firecrackers. Now, if I was to get arrested for not paying my taxes, when I get out... I should not be allowed to be around taxes anymore. <laughs> I should be able to walk into a 99 cent store and give them a dollar. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. It's a dollar seven. No, excuse me. I'm a registered tax offender. I can't be around taxes no more. Now, can you just give me my penny, please? Thank you. Yeah, I know it is what it is, ain't it? <laughs> now, the cool thing is, with all the success I've had with television and film, I feel like I'm ready to host my own reality show. Yeah. I'd have my show, I'd call it Last Christian Standing. <laughs> That's where we take 10 random Christians and put them all in one church. <laughs> then we tempt them every week with sin, See who get voted off every week. That's my show. All right, I feel like we done connected, we done bonded. I can be a little bit more real with y'all here before I go. Um, I'm going through some new stuff in my life. Um, I'm fat and I'm broke. Which means I need to join a gym, but I can't afford to. So what I have to do is walk around my neighborhood to get my exercise. So I need to talk to you dog lovers. Stop walking your dogs with no leash. Because I'm scared. And I'm tired of you looking at me like something wrong with me when I'm trying to verbally protect myself. Get your dog! Get your dog! You, you better get your dog! What is wrong with you? Why are you tripping, big man? What? No, muffin don't bite. Muffin don't bite. Well, I don't know muffin don't bite. All I see is a pit bull running toward me free. It would be the same as if you saw me walking down the street with a gun and no bullets. Be like, what? what's wrong with you? Why are you tripping, big man? What? Muffin don't bite. <laughs> Muffin don't bite. And then you name your dogs wrong, too. The name's supposed to match your dog. <laughs> I'm tired of coming to your house. Hey, Bone, you want to meet Cupcake? <laughs> All right, I'll meet Cupcake. Cupcake is a werewolf. <laughs> you should have named that dog Cujo. It's like meeting a white dude named Jamal. <laughs> hey, that's my time. I'm bound after. Thank you very much. You know, they always say clean comedy and all that. It can't be that strong. It can't be that funny. 
This has been absolutely hysterical. So much fun, and I have enjoyed watching your faces so much, and yours at home. We have spies. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm excited about this gal. She's not been doing this for very long, but she comes with great street cred because she won the 2013 Walmart International Talent Search. Now, Walmart has over a million employees, and she won their talent search concert contest, and then she quit. <laughs> she quit her day job like that. It took me years before I could quit my day job. She is so funny. She was also 2015 winner of the gospel comedy Trailblazers. Would you put your hands together and make welcome my friend Sandy Joy? Hey, everybody. Good to see y'all. So, uh, thank you. That was a nice applause. So, uh, I'm, I'm 50. Yeah. <laughs> One <laughs> and a half. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a miracle that my kids still even speak to me, you know? Because women, we have this crazy ability to, like, go into a full-on rage whoosh, and then suck it back in. <laughs> and that's the scary part, yeah. right? You've all done this. Man, I've never seen a man do this. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... And I'll see, you kids, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why is my cell phone in the bathtub? Where is the goldfish? How many times do I have to tell you I am not the maid? Hello? <laughs> oh, oh, Pastor Andy? Oh, no, it's not an inconvenience at all. No, I'm so glad you'd like me to lead a Bible study. Mm -hmm. Taming the tongue. Okay, I'm sorry, I was, could you all hold on for one second, Pastor Andy? You kids better knock it off. Pastor Andy is on the phone. Put a sock in it. Did you ever get that when your mom yelled at you and just like, didn't you, just teeth, didn't even open her mouth, right? You knew you were in trouble. Oh, thank you, Pastor Andy. Yes, God bless you too. You kids better knock it off. I'm going to tell your father when he gets home. It's not good. It's very dangerous. But uh, my kids do still have a relationship with me. I'm really proud. I have two daughters, 24. I had to think for a second. Isn't that sad? 20 banana, whatever, pick a number. It's all good. 24, 19 years old, they're fantastic. They're a joy in my heart. Uh, but when the 19 year old was younger, she came up to me and she said, Mom. I said, Yes, honey. She's like, Mom. I knew it was serious. It was a two mom conversation. <laughs> mom, I have an awkwardly long torso. <laughs> and so I really think you should let me get my belly button pierced because I have an awkwardly long torso. And I said to her, I am pretty sure that the God-given belly button you have already breaks up your awkwardly long torso. <laughs> yeah, so long torso girl and I, we had to go bathing suit shopping. I don't know if you've been in a junior's department lately. It looks like a swarm of locusts just came through. <laughs> right, the fabric is just like hanging. Little tiny shreds, just hanging, dangling there. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, you got that, it was good. So she comes skipping up to me with this. She's like, Mom, Mom, look at this. Isn't this adorable? It's so cute. I'm like, what, what is that, a sleep mask? <laughs> like, I'm like, tell you what, you know what? Pick up 22 of those, and we'll take them home, and I'll stitch them into a bathing suit for you. <laughs> Not even happening. Ridiculous. And men, to me, I don't know. Sorry, man. I'm like, don't, don't, be, don't, hate, don't be haters. In my experience, see how I covered that up? Men are just kind of like, they don't care. They're just kind of like, yep, grow a stomach. I'll call it Barnabas Maximus. We'll just be over here eating a plate of nachos. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, but then when it comes my turn to get a bathing suit, because women, we will hang on to a bathing suit. I'll wear it 15 years, right? You put it on, the elastic is down around your ankles. <laughs> That doesn't even have any back to it. It's like a total screen in the back. There's nothing even back there anymore. There comes a point in time, right? You just got to give it up. You got to give it up. So I'm out one day and, you know, I can't shop in the juniors department anymore. I think for me, there comes a time for me, I think it was about seven when that happened. <laughs> I had to move into the missus department, right? <laughs> so I'm in there and I take a friend with me because nobody wants to go bathing suit shopping by themselves. I mean, men, I'm sure you do that. But when we do this together, we hold hands, right? <laughs> sing a little song, whatever. Whatever it takes to keep your spirits up. That's what you do. So I took my friend with me, my friend Tracy. 
Now, here's the thing that you should know. I'm a size 14. Yeah, I just said that. Millions of people are now going to know I'm a size 14. <laughs> Thank you. She's a size zero. A size zero. Thank you. If you're a size zero, do not make eye contact with me right, right now. Just don't do it. I'm working out my anger issues. So she's a size zero, which basically is like air with skin on it. Okay? So we're in the store. I look up. I see a sign, and it says, Miracle Suit with bulge-reducing fiber. I was like, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, so she runs on ahead of me. She grabs the suit I hear her in the fitting room. Next thing I just hear is, <laughs> never saw her again. <laughs> Instantly vaporized. So meanwhile, there's three of us. They're like size 14, 16. We run to the rack, grab our suits off the rack run into the fitting room, and I don't know if you've heard the sound of three women trying to get into a miracle suit. <laughs> Bulge reducing fiber. It's like, <laughs> wee, wee, wee. It's kind of a cross between razorback hugs, eating their slop, and childbirth. So we get in there and finally, I can tell, I feel there's a holy hush that has fallen over. Revival is, do you feel me? Revival is about to break out. And so I got up to the, got up to the mirror and I lifted my gaze for the first time. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that miracle suit, it did everything it promised it would. Mm -hmm. I went from a size 14 to a size two. Yep, from here to here. <laughs> My thigh, boom. Oh, like a can of refrigerator biscuits had exploded. <laughs> and the dough is just like oozing and oozing and oozing. What a gross word, onto the floor. I looked down, I'm like, what is that puddle? It's my thigh, right? Picture the Pillsbury Doughboy wearing a corset. I'm Sandy Joy. Thank you so much. You guys have been awesome. The next guy coming up is an incredible man all the way from San Antonio, Texas. Has a great show on Sirius Satellite Radio. You can hear him constantly there. Put your hands together and make welcome my sweet friend, Cleto Rodriguez. All right, how you doing? Oh, please stop, stop. Oh, thank you very much. I gotta make this quick. My kids in the car. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a little bummed out. Celebrated my 15-year wedding anniversary yesterday. I was very excited about that. Thank you, thank you. Um, except I got kind of ripped off a little bit. Uh, my wife and I exchange gifts every year, and 15. It's a, you know. In dog years, that's a lot, you know what I mean? And here I am, I gave her a beautiful necklace. You know what I got as a gift? P90X. <laughs> How's that a gift? You seen the guy, right, in the infomercial, took like, hey, give me 90 days, I'll make you look like me. <laughs> no, you won't. I mean, has anyone here done P90X? Anybody, yeah? How far did you get, man? That's all you had to say, right there. The intro. Ma'am, ma right here, right here. I was on day three for four months, okay? Let's, let's get that straight. I mean, again, correct me if I'm wrong, after the first day of doing P90X, man, you, the next day, you were so sore. You were so sore, it hurts to breathe. I woke up, I was like, ah, ah, ah. My wife is yelling at me, hurry up, the trash man's come. Ah, ah. I had my key, I dropped it, you know, from my front door. She thought I was singing opera in the other room. Ah, 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 ah. The trash ain't going out this week. But, and again, it's like, I mean, again, you're so sore that like, you know that, you know that back fat right here? You know when you're walking, someone calls you, you turn around, it pinches you? You know what I'm talking about? Don't make me call you out. You know what I'm talking about? You know, like, like even that was like talking to me, like what's wrong with you? I thought we were friends, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I have not, I mean, it was so, I was so sore. And then he sweat something serious. 
I was sweating out tacos I haven't had since third grade. I kid you not. <laughs> and the only reason she came, and I get the hint, she, and I'll go, by the way, if you bought P90X on Craigslist last February, couple, last week in February, whatever it was, for $19, you're welcome. <laughs> Craigslist gone. Because I tell you, my wife, the reason I did that is because there's a look your wife will give you. Because I know she wants to make me lose weight. And I had to join a fitness gym because I was one nacho away from being a mariachi. Let's get that out of the way, all right? <laughs> and I said, there's a look your wife will give you that will make you want to lose weight. and will make you go to the gym. We were sitting there. It was our date night. We're watching The Man of Steel, Superman. Because that's what we do when it's not payday. It's date night and we watch movies at home. And we're watching The Man of Steel. I don't know if you've seen The New Man of Steel, The New Superman. He's a pretty boy. Yeah, he's got abs, whatever, okay? <laughs> There he is, you know, my wife, there's a scene in the movie where my wife is looking at Superman save people from a fire with no shirt on. And then, she's looking at me. <laughs> this is her. Like trying to figure out what shape am I, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it doesn't help me any that I'm sitting in my recliner with no shirt on, with a plate of nachos sitting on my stomach right here. <laughs> oh yeah, this guy's fit. Look at him, he works out. <laughs> Pass me my Coke. <laughs> what? You want me to look like Superman? All right, so I put a big S with nacho cheese on my chest. <laughs> Boom, Superman. <laughs> So I had to go join a fitness gym because she wanted me to go get like, you know, I had to go get a physical. And that was something. The doctor came up to me and goes, Mr. Rodriguez, I'm sorry to inform you, but you're borderline diabetic. I said, Doc, come on. Don't tell a Mexican he's borderline anything. <laughs> we'll cross that on purpose, you know what I'm saying? Give me the fry, you know what I mean? Yeah. He didn't think that was funny at all, you know? But he, he goes, you need to take this serious. I'm like, calm down, I'm a comedian, da, 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 you know? <laughs> you need to get rid of your carbs. My like, what? Your carbs, your pastas, check. Your breads, check. Your tortillas, see ya, doc. You almost had me, you almost had me. You take away my tortillas, you might as well take away my air. Because I love tortillas. And this is the funny part of the conversation. He goes, Mr. Rodriguez, you can still have tortillas. You just gotta have wheat. I go, yeah, I can eat a paper plate too, but I don't do that. I want taste, my friend. So you recommend I go join a fitness gym, and uh, I went, you ever notice you walk into a fitness gym, they have these wall-to-wall -wall mirrors to show everything? Yeah. Everything, I, had, I was like, look, it's like, is that my back? <laughs> or is there a camel behind me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I didn't know they had their own fitness lingo in the gym, I didn't know that. My first time in this gym, this guy comes up to me, hey, little man, can you spot me? Brother, I'm broke, I have no money. I'm on the free week plan. I'm out of here on Friday, I don't even know you. And this other guy came up to me and I didn't know what side of the fence he was on. Hey, can you watch me squat? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, chief, I'm not the one. And what's the deal with those machines that get off them and still feels like you're on them? I was on the Stairmaster for like 45 minutes. I got up there, hey, where's your water? <laughs> oh, over oh, here, okay, thank you. All day long, I look like a moron just walking like this. Yeah, I was on the Stairmaster. I was, you know, extra 30 minutes, put it in. You ever work out so hard, you started breathing funny? <laughs> Some ladies all, Shamu, you all right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, lady, stop throwing water on me. They say if you take steroids, it causes a lot of facial hair. Let me tell you about my trainer, Bertha. Oh, this woman had so much hair in her face, I thought I had Chewbacca training me. I'm like, one more. I was like, chill out, Chewie, I'm dying. I was afraid to give her water. I thought gremlins were gonna pop out, you know what I'm saying? I told my wife, it's not fun at the gym. She, you know what she said? Go join water aerobics, it's fun. Go join water aerobics, it's fun. I join. 
water aerobics. I was the only man in water aerobics. They had some women there, some very mature women. I think the youngest was like 92. I thought they were filming Cocoon 3 in this class. I didn't know what was going on. I thought it was a scuba diving class with all the oxygen tanks around the pool. <laughs> Bless their heart, they're playing Marco Polo to the smell of Ben Gay. That's not right. Marco, there you are. I'll never, I, and then, you know, it's so funny because that day I'll never forget it because we got kicked out. <laughs> this is how we got kicked out. We, my wife was with me and I took, we took our son and they have a daycare there and this guy, they had this big old plastic tree house and uh, he was there playing and they give you a number and then you go and take off. So my wife and I went to the spin class and we're doing, first of all, I don't recommend spin class to anybody. <laughs> I'm not saying what Lance Armstrong did was right, but let's just say I understand. So we saw the number, we're like, oh man, we gotta go get our, our, our kids. So we walk in and we see uh, my son's like in the principal's office, just sitting there, you know? So I said, excuse me, man, what's going on? She goes, sir, we have a strict policy. We only take kids here that are potty trained. He's eight. He's potty trained. She goes, well, sir, maybe he needs to tell you. So I go, Samuel, what's going on, son? What happened? Dad, I was having a good time in the treehouse. And I didn't want to go to the restroom, so I did what you told me, and I went behind the tree. <laughs> My wife has a look on her face like, that's your son. <laughs> Married my wife, you know, I said it was our 15-year anniversary, and I almost didn't think she was going to marry me, because when, you know, when we were dating, she told me, I hope whoever asked me to marry them is original. And I, I thought I was being original, but mind you, I'm a comedian. And I proposed to my wife during the game of Pictionary. Yeah, I thought it was romantic too. Her, not so much. If you don't know what Pictionary is, like charades, but you have to draw it on the board and they have to guess what it is. And I was there and I, I, I drew a church plus a ring plus people. Except I was so nervous about asking her to marry me, I forgot to put the cross on the church. So she's sitting there guessing, pawn shop, yard sale. Flea market. And I got mad. I go, no, it's when you marry me. She goes, she goes, oh. Oh. She went off. <laughs> you mean to tell me? You're asking me? Your queen? To marry you during the game of Pictionary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where's our honeymoon? Candyland? She bought me that game, sorry, because she said that's what I was. And if I do that again, I'll be playing Uno. Does anybody know what that means? Still trying to figure that one out. And I married a beautiful Christian woman. You know, that's the thing. I married a beautiful Christian woman. Because see, God will get, use a beautiful woman to get you to go to church, I found out. Yeah, because man will follow. We think you're beautiful, ladies. We will follow you anywhere. We'll follow you to church, prison. It don't matter. We'll follow you wherever. And I was there, and I remember my wife, she was like, you want to go to church with me? I'm like, oh, I'll go anywhere with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because <laughs> she was so beautiful, you know? And I'll never forget, because my wife went to a non-denominational church, and me, I was raised Catholic. Any Catholics in here, by any chance? Any recovering Catholics in here, by any chance? All right? Yeah. And it's like my, my, my wife, I remember her, her church. I'll never forget the first time I went to her church, because, you know, you realize you haven't, been, you haven't been to church in a long time, and you go back. For some reason, doesn't it seem like the service is directed right toward you? Yeah. I was in my wife's church, I heard words like, worthless, lazy, weak. <laughs> I just stood up, here I am. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking to me, never mind, I thought you were talking to me. I told my wife, would you tell him I was coming or what? That's rude. <laughs> and I'll be honest, the first service, it made me cry. It did, out of all the people in the congregation, the pastor looks at me and asks me this question. Son, is your name in the book of life? And I was like, well, son, my name's Kleppel. 
It's not even in the book of baby names. <laughs> I'm gonna burn it hell. I'll never forget. I'll never forget that service because the pastor talked without even talking. It made me feel crazy. He went like this. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You're not hearing me. And I'm sitting down like this. What do you say? I'm like, man, he's good. But when he did speak, boy, did people listen. Cops! You all right, man? I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Sorry. He said, you simply look. He said, couples, you make sure you cast that devil out right there. It scared me too, man. You know what I'm saying? I never passed gas that loud in church in my life. I'm going to be honest with you. My whole hemorrhoid went, nah, nah, you know what I mean? It scared me half to death. He said, you simply look up and say, devil, get the heck out of here. Folks, when I heard that, that's all I needed to hear. I went home that afternoon. Football was on. And I hadn't cut the grass yet. And I'm sitting there watching the game. And my wife comes in turns it off. <laughs> right there, I didn't get mad. I remember what the pastor told me. I looked at my wife and I said, Devil! Get the heck out of here! And turn that TV on now! We got blessed with a beautiful baby girl recently. We're very excited about that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Praise God. Uh, you don't have to clap. It's our sixth one. Um, we're trying to make a band. Uh, <laughs> why is it when you tell people that your baby was 15 pounds and three ounces, they all freak out like that? Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Not our baby. Our baby was eight pounds, seven ounces. But the lady on the other side of the curtain, all of them were like, ah! I moved the curtain back, saw the kid walk out. He was going on. Can somebody cut this cord? I can't go anywhere. <laughs> we had problems during the pregnancy because my little girl came out face up and she got stuck. And they used a little vacuum thing in her head called the dirt devil. <laughs> we we're gonna use the rainbow, but we didn't pass the credit app. And uh, <laughs> the whole time my little girl's coming out, I'm looking at her, she's looking like my father-in-law. <laughs> and he's not the prettiest man, you know what I'm saying? So my wife got mad because she's looking at me, looking at the birth of our kid. Folks, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was thinking my daughter come out of my wife like she was a bad fax. I was like, what? I told the doctor, what is this, the cover page? She's always mad at me. The other day I was changing my little girl's diaper. I don't know what she ate or what, but I, I started gang. I ran out of those baby wipes. So I started using these Clorox wipes we had under the sink. Whatever, don't judge me, don't judge me, whatever. A wipey's a wipey. I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told my wife. It said multi-purpose on the package right there. Only thing is, she looks so white now. She don't even look Mexican anymore. It's cool, we use it to our advantage because the other day we needed a loan and she's the only one that got approved. We're like, yeah, yeah. All right, leather interior. Um, <laughs> we had... Uh, I'll never forget this thing as long as I live because my wife decided she was going to nurse our child. And uh, folks, I found out early on that um, I could not hold my baby without a shirt and watch TV at the same time. <laughs> because it hurts. It was the worst pain I ever felt in my life. I'm sitting there watching football. 30, 40. My baby just hooked on caca! Like a pit bull, just locked jaw, just. Mm. It hurt so bad. I stood up, I let her go, she was just hanging on. I had to burn her off like a tick. What's wrong with you? I'm daddy. I don't know, I don't know what's worse, finding out I needed a bra or that she was full. May God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much for having me coming out. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. 
Our next performer toured with the Righteous Brothers. He's been on Comedy Central, ABC Family, NBC, CBS, and TBN. He worked with B.B. King, The Temptations, and Tim Conway. Boy, that's a big, vast lot of work. I want you to make welcome my wonderful friend, Nazareth! <laughs> Nazareth, yes. Yes, I am from the Middle East, but ever since September 11th, I feel so Mexican. <laughs> That's why they put me last. They waited till I cleared security or something. Man, Nashville airport security, they're tough, man. I got, I got arrested for a photobomb. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I lie. I, I, and some people come to me, they go, you know, Nazareth, lately, because you look like those jihadis, kind of... Have you noticed people looking at you weird? I go, no, I'm too busy looking for those jihadis. You know what I mean? I get scared. I watch the news. If there's an earthquake, I, Lord, I hope it's not an explosion or something, that a Middle Eastern dead. A hurricane. I hope it's Hurricane Bob or Hurricane Kay. It's not Hurricane Ahmed or Hurricane Abdul. Because it like, makes me nervous. What happened? We used to be your 7-Eleven people, remember? <laughs> Where did we go wrong? We stayed up all night for you people. The Indians went to bed at nine. We stayed up all night. We took your camel jokes, your slurpy jokes, they didn't bother us. I even have little girls make fun of me. This girl comes to me, she goes, do you know where Middle Eastern people go when they die? I'm like, where, honey? Heaven 11, ha! Out of here. But my name is Nazareth. I was born in the city of Nazareth in Israel. And it's a family tradition to name you after the city. I feel sorry for my brother, Y. Kiki. <laughs> my other brother, Al Bukerke. <laughs> and my sister, Buffalo. <laughs> location, location, location. Like when you guys name your kids, you look at the baby name book, we look at Google Maps. <sighs> but I, you know, I'm... I was born in Israel. I was, came from a Greek Orthodox Christian family. My parents never took me to church once. They took me to church and the, the pastor had a, lo, a priest, had a long beard and to have to kiss his hand on the cross. Till this day, I can't watch Duck Dynasty without going, Father Sai, <laughs> forgive me my sins. But I'm a born again believer now. I attend a big church in Corona, California. We're getting so big now when you call the prayer hotline, you get a guy from India to answer the phone. <laughs> But I love this country. I moved here 32 years ago. I love this nation. My first exposure to this country was a small zoo in Cleveland. I paid $20 to see an elephant, a camel, a bull, and a donkey. In my country, that's a car dealership. <laughs> but I love this country because it's, you know, this is the only place in the world where you can take French toast, English muffin, Canadian bacon, and call it the all-American breakfast. See, Americans love to eat. We love to eat. We find holidays, so we eat. Valentine's Day, let's eat. Mother's Day, let's eat. Oh, Jesus was born, let's eat. He rose from the dead, let's eat. And I hate to tell you this. The day you die, five minutes after you, they bury you, guess what your family is going to do? <laughs> In your memory, they're going to eat. It's all about food. Our foreign policy is based on food. We'll never have a war with Italy or China. Why not? Good food. <laughs> Russia, we don't know what they eat. Middle East, we'll fight them. We don't care. Their food sounds like pet names. Come here, falafel. Here, hummus, hummus, hummus. We even have restaurants and gas stations now. That's how much we like to eat. I went to one. It was a sit-down restaurant. I, I said, okay, I'll take the filet mignon with a side of lobster and 20 on four. It, it's all about food. If you're, if you're single here, any single people? You know, sir... You, do me this favor, tomorrow don't get dressed, just put your pajamas on, go to the mall with a cheesecake with you. <laughs> Every woman in the mall will stare at you. You're late for work, take a dozen Krispy Kremes to work. Nobody cares how late you are. Oh, the line must have been long at the Krispy Kreme. You know, the most beautiful woman in America is not Miss America, it's Mrs. Fields. <laughs> it's all about food in this country. You know, I, I just, you know, like when I go to a restaurant uh, or a, I go to like a, a grocery store. What, what's your grocery store's name here? Kroger's. Kroger's, yeah, good name. I go to Albertsons. I was in North Carolina, they have one called Piggly Wiggly. Yeah. Really, would you shop at a Piggly Wiggly? Yeah. 
would have loved to be there when they named the place. Let's call it grocery town. No, we want some meat. Beef country. No. Let's call pig. Piggly. Yeah, but we're not fresh. Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> I went to the grocery store with 12 items of food to buy for my wife. I get there. I get to the counter. $162. And the cashier goes, you want to donate a dollar toward hunger? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> a can of peanuts is $15. Isn't peanuts means it's peanuts? I go, how come it's 15 bucks? She goes, well, gas prices are up. <laughs> well, tell me where they grow it. I'll go pick it up myself. <laughs> and I know gas prices were up. I put it for California, $4 a gallon. Not only I shook the nozzle, I licked it. <laughs> And then she goes, you want paper or plastic? No, I want a gift box. <laughs> Give me a gift receipt for it, too. You go to Walmart, why pay more? Because you charge me more. <laughs> and you know, I grew up in a third world country. So for me to go to a grocery store to find one item that you want, you're lucky. Here, you go like, what? There's 15 brands of tasteless water. <laughs> the minute you pour it, you can't tell what it is. 20 brands of milk. How many brands of cows do we have? <laughs> and then you know what? You, they have almond milk and soy milk. Uh, and one guy was standing next to me and I'm like, I'm like dazed, like what do I want? He goes, did you know there's no almond in almond milk? I go, did you know there's no beef in regular milk? <laughs> what are I doing? <laughs> and then you go to the toothpaste. Toothpaste, like 50 brands of toothpaste. And I have to choose one. I'm like, you, I don't like you. You're aggressive. You wanna fight gingivitis. You wanna fight gum disease. You wanna fight bad breath. I want a peaceful paste. <laughs> and then you get to the cereal. What, two aisles of cereal? I'm standing there like the bachelor with a rose. You, you're too sweet for me. You, your maturity date is coming too soon. You know, I don't know. You, you're literally throwing yourself at me. Have some dignity. What is this buy one, get one free and a toy inside? Come on. You, I like you a lot. You're probably gonna be the one. But at this stage of my life, I'm not ready to commit to one source of fiber right now. I, I don't know. But I, I, I don't wanna do groceries, my wife does it. You know, me and my wife in August will be married 20 years. I love this woman more today than when I met her. What a beautiful, godly woman loves the Lord. She's into candles. She goes shopping, she comes back with candles. We have so many candles, the Vatican calls us once in a while. The other day we were going to, uh, to, uh, you know, to, to dinner. I said, honey, why did you get ready? Because it takes you a little longer. She goes, okay. So she jumped in the shower, got out, put her robe on. I jumped in the shower, got out, put my clothes on, got in the car, started the car, waited 20 minutes in the garage. So it wasn't nice to hunk the horn, so I came back out. And I wish I didn't. Because when I walked into the room, no husband wanted to see this. See, his wife, she was in her robe still, looking at the open closet with the look of a child from Africa who haven't eaten in 20 days. And she said, I have nothing to wear. It broke my heart, people. No wife should go through that. So for $29.90 a month, you can help me help my wife for less than a dollar a day. And I know what you're thinking, the money, where's the money going? It's going to her wardrobe. Every month, you're gonna get a letter from us with a picture of her in a new outfit. <laughs> I'll see you after the show, $29.99. But I'm, uh, I'm, you know, we got married, you know, a year and a half later, she got pregnant. We went to Lamaze. Anybody been to Lamaze? It's a French word that means don't waste your money, the baby's gonna come out anyway. <laughs> we had a beautiful baby boy, we named him Newport Beach. Two years later, we had baby Carol. Sleeps all day, stays up all night. I'm pro-life, but not at two in the morning. And then seven years later, we have baby Tally. Tally is Hebrew for oops. <laughs> I have three kids, I'm a dad, three kids. When, when I used to drive with my dad, we were like three brothers, and we'd be fighting in the back of the car, and dad would reach out like, shut up, stop fighting. Stop, we're not there yet. Not in my family. I drove for five hours the other day. I had three kids in the back, quiet in silence. I had to reach out and shut their phone screens. <laughs> like, talk to me, don't ask Google, ask me. Don't go to Snapchat, talk to your mother. And my wife goes, what, what, what do you think? <laughs> Ever since I got the Verizon family plan, I don't have a family anymore. 
I'm serious. They don't talk to me. I come home. One on the iPad, one on the iMac, one on the iPhone. I have to call them by their username to get them to listen to me. <laughs> and our house is all about Wi-Fi. We're going to your uncle. Does he have Wi-Fi? I don't know. We get there. Hey, hi, guys. How are you? What's the password? Hey, up. We need Wi-Fi. <laughs> and I told my son, I said, we're Christian, son. You know, if someone pushes you at school or anything, you turn the other cheek. This is what you do. If they push you, grab the wrist, put it behind their arm, grab it from the neck and say, I forgive you. <laughs> but, but now I just want to, I want to encourage the woman here in this room and on TV. Ladies, if your husband snores, raise your arm. I want to pray for you. Yes. Don't, don't hide it. I have an aunt who died from secondhand sleep apnea. This can kill you people. Because men don't understand that this woman you're sitting next to, you know, she prayed for you. Lord, send me a prince. I don't want to sleep at night anymore. We're going to talk and worship and talk. And then you get married at wedding night at midnight. He's... <laughs> but you're so madly in love. You go, oh God, my honey needs oxygen. <laughs> Tilt your head, honey bunny. You're making little noises. Two years later, you still have not slept since wedding night. He's still, but now your attitude have changed. You look at him and you look up and say, God, Moses killed an Egyptian and you forgave him. <laughs> Let's just call it a pillow fight that went wrong. Ah! Five years later, you no longer sleep next to him. You just stare at him. I don't respect you. Look at you, you oxygen hog. You suck the roof when you inhale. And you start reading him like a dog. Roll over, roll over. Wah, wah, wah. Lay down. <laughs> Ten years later, he has a machine. Oh, thank God. I should have listened to my mother. She knew something was wrong with him, but I didn't know what it was. And 15 years later, he's old, he's drooling, he got hair in his throat. He's like... Just look at him and look up and say, God, just take him. I sacrifice him back to you. Just like Abraham put Isaac on the altar. Here you go. And don't send me a goat. I'm going to keep the goat. I'd rather hear bad and... I don't know why I don't snore. I'm from the Middle East. We're like Jewish people. We snore when we talk. Hi, how are you? That's why some Middle Eastern women wear veils. It's not religious. Yeah, and, and some of them, you know, like some of them, what do they do when they snore? They sound like what? Some of them sound like a Harley Davidson that needs tune up. They'll be. Honey, put it in neutral. I'm trying to sleep. Some sound like a lion facing a hummingbird. It'll be... <laughs> Some of them will scare you. They'll be... <laughs> Wake up, honey. We have a mortgage. Wake up. Not in this economy. You're not leaving. You know, one time I was doing the Grand Ole Opry here in Nashville, Tennessee. And they forgot to book a room for my road manager, but they put me at the Opry Land. Two big beds. And my manager, he goes, oh, no, I'll stay in the... I said, no, I have an extra bed. So he's older. I'm sleeping. He's sleeping. I wake up to hear someone cutting a tree <laughs> and eating Doritos at the same time. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, that's it. So I put my headphones on. I turned it to rap. It's the loudest thing I could come up with. It didn't even help. It was like... I said, no, that's it. I need some sleep. So I took my pillow. I said, I'm going to choke him a little bit to wake him up. He started dreaming out loud. Oh, they're coming. <laughs> Open the door. <laughs> Run to the car. <laughs> start the car. <laughs> the car won't start. <laughs> I wanted to choke him, but I want to hear the end of the story. <laughs> I'm Nazareth. Thank you very much. And God bless you.